All right. Welcome, everyone, to Health Talks Coping with COVID at Home, presented by SJCS Alumni Association and SJCS. And of course, today is a very special day because it's Mother's Day. So I would like to greet all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day. Yay. And let me introduce myself. My name is Valerie Tan from Class of 99. And it is my honor to be your host and co-moderator for today. I promise everyone this will be a truly informative webinar. As you can see, the topic is truly relevant. And in this webinar, we will find out the truth and the facts. And just a reminder to everyone to please turn off your video and mic for a smooth webinar. And of course, I won't be alone as a moderator. I will be joined by a doctor from SJCS Class 1978. He's a surgical oncologist, Manila Doctor Hospital, and Associate Professor of Surgery, University of the Philippines, Manila, Philippine General Hospital. Please welcome Dr. Marco. Hi, Doc. Hi, Doc. Hello, and good afternoon, everybody. A happy Mother's Day to all. Firstly, thank you, Val, of Class 99. The honor is all mine, actually, to be able to share the stage with such a young, talented, and vibrant model and entrepreneur, a highly successful content creator, and experienced TV and event host. But since you already casually revealed my age by mentioning my batch, allow me then to give a warm shout out to all the proud SJCA class of 1978, yoo also celebrating today the birthday of our past president, Sophia Ko Ong. Lastly, my heartfelt appreciation for this opportunity to participate goes to Mr. Johnny C and his very competent and super efficient secretariat headed by Ms. Jehan, Vanessa Sia Lee, my favorite youngest sibling and pediatrician sister, Dr. Roslyn Ko, Li Chao of class 86, to whom I have to lay the blame for this task. And of course, to the entire SJCS Alumni Association. Mabuhay, Gyeonghi, and thank you all for being here. Incidentally, we can be watched over Zoom and via YouTube. We promise an exciting afternoon, as uh, Val has said for all of you, as we will have a Q&A uh, session after our main presentation by our distinguished guest. So please feel free to share your queries through the Zoom chat box or at the YouTube comment section. So now lead us in our pursuit for divine intervention and blessings with an opening prayer and remarks. Please welcome our own beloved SJCS school principal, Father Paulino Bellamide. So hi, good afternoon to, to all. Uh, for, for our prayer this afternoon, I am going to use um, the Oratio Imperata, but not the whole thing because it's quite long. It's very uh, appropriate prayer for today. Uh, so I edited it a bit so that, uh, you know, to suit our, our needs this afternoon. So let us put ourselves in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray for our health workers, Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant all these to our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And Mary, help of the sick, pray for pray us. For us. St. Jude Thaddeus, pray, pray for, for us. us. So do I go straight to my remarks now? 
Yes, Father. Yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, on behalf of the school director, uh, Father Roland Aquino, SVD, I welcome you all to these health talks sponsored by the SJCS um, Alumni Association. Now, the topic for today is coping with COVID at home. A very timely subject, especially considering that the pandemic is no longer a distant uh, threat, but has already encroached into the lives of many Judenites and their families. So as we pray for each other, we also need to take proactive measures to help ourselves and our loved ones. And one very important thing we can do in that direction is to inform ourselves. We should not allow ourselves to be paralyzed by helplessness and unfounded fears. God knows how many of these uh, speculations uh, and then fake news swirling around and creating havoc in, in the hearts of many. So let, let us remind ourselves that as somebody once said, the only thing to fear is fear itself. Uh, so uh, we are grateful to the SJCS Alumni Association for organizing this very timely and very appropriate event uh, to, to help us um, gain some knowledge and some grip into this pandemic that we face. And we also thank our resource person uh, who made themselves available today, Dr. Emilda Luna and panelist Jane King So Chang. So, uh, without uh, much ado, uh, thank you and uh, let us have a very learning and fruitful afternoon. Thank you so much, Father King Belamida. Thank you. And also to give his welcome remarks, please welcome from SJCS Patch 76. He has been in the information technology field for the last 30 years and was formerly Chief Information Officer of ABS-CBN and the President of your St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association, Mr. Johnny C. Hi, Sir Johnny. Hi, Valerie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Mark Ko for uh, also agreeing to be one of our moderators today. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm very glad that I'm not the only person from a decade of uh, the 70s to be part of this seminar. Uh, but uh, as you can see, uh, Jehan decided that I should update my picture so that I continue to showcase my COVID look as Mr. Sean Cannery. Anyway, uh, you know, the, the last few weeks, we have seen so many uh, in terms of surges in COVID infections. Uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, many of those affected are those that are close to us. And as Father King mentioned, uh, so many in our Judenite family are affected. Uh, even in our board, uh, we have uh, so many people that are affected deeply. Uh, so it's, it's it's so close to the point that you know many of us have been attending masses, saying prayers for friends and loved ones every day for the last few weeks. So we all hurt, we we all grieve, and and many of us are feeling depressed from all the bad news, uh, one after the other. And even more alarming is the fact that even as even if we want to, even if we can afford to. We, it's been a challenge to have our loved ones confined to a hospital that could take care of them. The hospitals are full and, and patients are being turned away. So many of us are forced to confront COVID uh, and its situations inside the confines of our homes. So our, your alumni association then decided that it is best to take the bull by the horns by providing necessary information and guidance 
to help us cope with COVID situations in our homes. As, as Father King mentioned, you, you have a plethora of, of news, whether it's true or fake, all over the place that it is so hard to discern. So at least here in this particular webinar, we will have the experts discussing what is appropriate and what we should be doing. I'm grateful for the core group. Uh, this, this webinar was organized so quickly in a very short span of time. So it, we, we, it took uh, a very few uh, Judenite uh, individuals to actually focus on, on working on this. So as Mark mentioned some of them, I'm very grateful to our secretary, Jayan Lee. Uh, and the uh, ever competent Dr. Ro Dr. Roslyn Ko Di Chow, who was one of our first contacts, at least in the uh, Philippine General Hospital, when we were starting our campaign to send uh, PPEs to the various hospitals where Judenite alumni uh, were present. And to help us with all the graphical uh, images and content is uh, one of our board members, Karen Ong Si. They helped us organize this webinar in a very, very short time. Uh, we are also very thankful for the ever helpful Judenites who are helping us uh, in, in both speaking and moderating roles for this event. So uh, you got uh, the likes of Father Mark, uh, uh, Dr. Not Father, Dr. Mark Ko, and the uh, very charming Valerie Tan uh, to, to help us moderate this. And of course, uh, as part of our panelists, uh, another Judenite, Jane King Su Cheng. So thank you very much for joining us. But of course, I also want to thank uh, the uh, our guests, the experts in, in, in this area, Dr. Emel Daluna, uh, for agreeing to join us despite her busy schedules and so many commitments to speak in front of many people. Okay. Thank you also uh, to St. Jude Catholic School uh, and specifically Father Rocky Aquino for allowing us to use this facility, the school's facilities to host this webinar. You know, this, this is the first. Uh, we decided to, to start organizing more webinars under the banner of Health Talks, because I think it is very important for us to be informed. Uh, you know, many of us are, are looking at uh, different ailments uh, affecting us. Uh, we also want to take care of our families, the homes. So we will we'll put up more webinars uh, and, and we're very grateful for the fact that we do have quite a, an army of uh, Judenite doctors and, and practitioners who are very capable of providing guidance and subject matter expertise. So thank you very much for, for joining us today and may all, may all of you continue to be protected. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, Sir Johnny C. And ladies and gentlemen, for our webinar, we also invited a panelist for a richer discussion. She's from SJCS class of 1995, a writer, editor, and entrepreneur. She spent a number of years working with ABS-CBN Publishing. And in between editorial posts, she took on roles such as a celebrity and fashion stylist and marketing manager for international fashion brands. She's currently with the Manila Bulletin, where she is sub-editor under the Lifestyle section. But more than that, she's first and foremost a mother of three and enjoys being at home to take care of her family. Please welcome Jane King Su Cheng. Hi, Jane. Good afternoon and happy Mother's Day. Hi, hi, Val. Good afternoon. It's great to see, well, virtually be here with everyone. I'm um, nice to see familiar faces and hear familiar voices as well. And I'm very grateful to join this talk this afternoon because it's it really is something that's close to my heart as a parenting sub-editor. Um, and I think it it also it's it's a concern that's that everyone agrees that we have to be um we have to know more and not just listen to hearsay and all the things that have been forwarding through all our social media apps. So yes, um, like Val mentioned, I am first and foremost a parent and also a parenting sub-editor. And I think I wasn't able to mention this earlier. Um, I'm also part of my family's Anglo King Foundation. So all three of these, these have kept me busy the past year, actually the past year or so. Um, Lampas na second anniversary ng COVID, di ba? So, 
I feel like it's, I think everyone agrees, I feel like it's deja vu and it's also getting worse. Um, there are more COVID strains out there and it's attacking, it's attacking families by groups and by households. So it's really, um, I think all the moms would agree, although it's, yeah, it's Mother's Day today, but I think we all agree that moms, even dads, parents, we do not sleep. But it, it keeps us awake, worrying, uh, worrying about our, our families and worrying about our parents and our in-laws. Hindi lang kasi tayo, it's not just our household that we have to take care of, it's everybody, even our friends who get, who if ever get caught by the virus, we also have to take care of each other. So I think this is a great um, great initiative because after this talk, I think we'll be able to help each other more um, with verified and factual um, tips. And um, yeah, so we can all fight this COVID and have a healthier life. And hopefully we can all get to see each other by soon. <laughs> Thank That's you. Right. Thank you, Jane. And we'll chat with you a bit more later in the program. Doc Mark? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jane. We now go to our main presentation. And as we all continue to face challenges amidst this pandemic and lockdowns, we constantly, constantly seek good tips, advice, and perhaps to be more attuned to our times, dare I say hacks even, just to appropriately cope with COVID at home. This is why it is such a privilege to introduce an astute authority in infectious diseases to share her expertise with us this afternoon. A medical graduate of the Pontifical and Royal University of Saint, I mean, Santo Tomas, Faculty of Medicine and Surgery, taking up residency training in pediatrics at St. Luke's Medical Center, followed by a fellowship in pediatric infectious diseases at my alma mater, the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital, and at the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine, or RITM. Dr. Amel is an assistant professor at the St. Luke's College of Medicine, the past chair of the Committee on Immunization of the Philippine Pediatric Society, member of the Department of Health National Verification Committee on Measles Elimination, and head of the sections of pediatric infectious diseases at three prestigious institutions, namely St. Luke's Medical Center QC and BGC and the Carino Memorial Medical Center. Our time constraints will certainly not do justice to her numerous achievements, accomplishments and accolades from her lengthy curriculum vitae. We are indeed so fortunate to have her with us today. So to grace us with her talk entitled Coping with COVID at home, please join me in giving a warm welcome to our distinguished speaker, an esteemed colleague, and most of all, a dear friend to my sister. Gentlemen and ladies, Dr. Imelda Acetra Luna. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for that kind introduction. Uh, I would like to thank uh, St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association for inviting me for this talk, specifically Dr. Roslyn Dichel, a good friend of mine. Let me just share my slides. Wait. Can you see my slide? Not uh, yet. Uh, not yet. yet. Oh, wait. Wait. Uh, What happened? Wait. Ah, uh, wait. Okay, okay. Do you see my slides already? Yes, yes, you can go ahead. So my sound is okay? Yes, Doctora, very good. Okay. 
So good afternoon again, everybody. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers out there. Again, thank you, um, St. Jude Catholic School uh, Alumni Association and Dr. Roslyn D. Chow for inviting me to give this talk. So my topic is coping with COVID at home. As a pediatrician, I deal with children's illnesses, but this pandemic has changed that. One family member getting infected exposes the whole family of possibly getting infected. Teaching family members on the timing and how to isolate and quarantine is of paramount importance to prevent further spread of the infection. This lecture is primarily for those who opt to do home care for COVID infected family members instead of them going to isolation facilities or the hospital. Children and the elderly since the start of the pandemic have been advised to stay home. If they do get infected with COVID, it usually comes from exposure from adults who go out of the household to work or do errands. Adults going out should remember that they are continuously exposed to COVID. If one is not careful, one can bring the virus home and infect their loved ones. This will be the outline of my lecture. Current status of COVID in the Philippines, factors that affect transmissibility of the virus, what is the difference between isolation and quarantine, and how do we apply this on the families affected by the virus? I will also give you case scenarios that families experience and how you as a family member can help isolate and quarantine. Also, we'll be talking about guidelines for families infected with the virus who opt to do home isolation. And lastly, who do we call if families need assistance, those who cannot afford testing, no place to isolate or quarantine? This is the weekly cases by date of illness from March of last year until May of this year. There was a surge of cases last year from July up to September. It stabilized by November to February. But starting March this year, there was another surge of cases, higher than last year, and we attribute this to the different variants of the virus. The surge in cases has resulted in hospitals being full, resulting to managing COVID cases at home. Everyone listening right now, I'm sure, has a relative, a friend, a colleague who had been infected by the virus. In several Viber groups, we've come across daily prayers for infected colleagues, friends, and relatives who are hospitalized or who lost their lives because of COVID. Majority of COVID cases occur in the young adult population, 20 to 50 years old, those in the working class. This age group has the most recoveries as well. But if you look at the number of deaths on your right, majority of deaths occur from the elderly above 50 years old. Children luckily are the least affected both in getting the disease and the number of deaths. Majority of the illness is still mild. A few of them asymptomatic. Asymptomatic means infected but no symptoms. The reason I am showing you this is because home isolation is primarily for those with mild symptoms and asymptomatic COVID. Right now, because of the unavailability of hospitals, some are already managing even moderate COVID cases at home. Managing COVID at home should be under the supervision of a doctor. We all know that SARS-CoV-2 is spread through person to person, primarily through respiratory droplets. Transmissibility of the virus is dependent on the following. Whether the people involved were wearing masks during the encounter, how near was the infected person to the other person, WHO and the Department of Health recommends one meter or three feet physical distancing, while CDC prefers two meters or six feet apart. How long were you exposed to the infected person? Acceptable duration is 15 minutes or less. Some guidelines place it at 30 minutes. Most importantly, was the place ventilated well when you were exposed to the infected person? We all know that open air is better than an enclosed space. It is difficult to apply the principles of transmissibility in our homes. We do not wear masks at home. 
Although the Department of Health has already recommended that people who are going out should wear masks even at home. But in general, people do not wear masks at home. We are in close contact with one another because we eat at the same time. We sleep in the same bedroom. We share the same bathroom. We stay at home for long periods of time. Our homes are considered an enclosed space. Though we have windows, most of the time these are closed to avoid dust and when our air conditioning units are on. This is a household that has the three C's, crowded, close contact setting, and closed space with poor ventilation. Space and number of household members are determinants of how easily the virus can be transmitted. The closer you are to one another, the more people there are, the easier for the virus to spread. Not all households are created equal. Some households have very limited space, like the family of A, or there may be enough space but too many household members, like the family of B. When it comes to space and number of family members, it is the families of C and D who will be able to do better home isolation and quarantine. For those who cannot do home isolation because of lack of space or by choice, they are referred to temporary treatment monitoring facilities or COVID ligtas centers. In Quezon City, these are called HOPE facilities. These treatment facilities are for those who are infected with mild symptoms or no symptoms. Home isolation is primarily for those with enough space at home, with own room and bathroom and are stable. Stable meaning they should have no danger signs like difficulty of breathing, no changes in sensorium and are able to eat and drink. If a family member is infected with COVID, be mindful that all household members may have been exposed and could potentially become ill later. Isolate immediately once with symptoms of COVID and while waiting for swab results. Children and other people can spread the virus even if they don't have symptoms. Remember that two days before the onset of symptoms, the person is already contagious. This is the pre-symptomatic phase. Most children do not appear to be at increased risk for severe illness from COVID. But people with comorbidities like hypertension, diabetes, obese, immunocompromised, or those with weak immune system tend to have the severe disease. We have to protect family members who are at high risk of having severe disease. Infections within a family home are usually staggered. The parent or household member who is not yet infected could take on the primary caregiver role for children to help minimize the chance of transmission. Remember that the risk of transmission is highest in the first few days of illness when the symptoms are more pronounced. Isolate the infected, quarantine the exposed. What is the difference between isolation and quarantine? Isolation keeps someone who is infected with the virus away from others, even in their home. Quarantine keeps someone who might have been exposed to the virus away from others. The goal of isolation is to separate those who are contagious or nakakahawa from those who are not yet infected. Not all of those who were exposed will get infected. That's why we need to separate them from the infected. Quarantine corresponds to the incubation period of the virus. It counts the days when the symptoms of COVID may appear. It's an observation period of 14 days. This is the basis of isolation and quarantine. The viral load is the amount of virus you get if one gets infected. The period of infectiousness is the time you are contagious to other people. Incubation period is the time from exposure kung kailan ka na-expose sa taong may COVID up to the onset of COVID symptoms. The incubation period is approximately 14 days. Two days before the onset of symptoms, the viral load represented by the red line is increasing and the patient is already infectious or contagious to other people. The viral load is very high from start of symptoms up to three to five days. 
then it gradually subsides. It is best to test people with COVID during this time using the RT-PCR test. The virus is still detectable through the PCR test for several weeks or even months after COVID, or what we call the post-infectious phase, but does not mean that the person is still contagious. This could just be viral remnants. We do not recommend repeating the RT-PCR test to check for recovery of previously infected patients. We separate immediately those who have symptoms since they are contagious. We quarantine those who were exposed to the infected person. It is during this period of observation will we know if the person exposed got infected or not. As I've said, not all of those who are exposed will get infected. How long should an infected person be isolated? For those who have mild symptoms, isolation is 10 days from the start of symptoms, including three days of being clinically recovered and asymptomatic. Clinically recovered means that the person has no more fever and would not need paracetamol and the person has significantly improved. For those with moderate severe critical COVID, the Department of Health recommends 21 days of isolation from start of symptoms inclusive of three days of being clinically recovered and asymptomatic. The reason for the longer period of isolation is that the virus is shed longer on those with more severe disease. There are people who are infected with COVID, but no symptoms or what we call asymptomatic. Positive sila sa PCR, pero walang nararamdaman. For these people, we still need to isolate them for 10 days from the time you did the test. Who do we quarantine? We quarantine close contacts or those who were exposed to the infected person. Who are considered close contacts? Those within three to six feet of someone who has COVID for a total of 15 minutes or more, or a person who provided care at home to someone who is sick with COVID, or one who had direct physical contact with a person, hugged or kissed them, or who shared eating or drinking utensils with somebody infected with COVID. All household members are considered close contacts if one member is infected with COVID. How long should one quarantine if you are a household contact? The magic number is 14 days. This corresponds to the incubation period of COVID. All those who were exposed to the infected person should observe for signs and symptoms of COVID within this period. If you remain asymptomatic for 14 days, then it means that you were not infected with the virus. For those who develop symptoms of COVID within 14 days, you need to do RT-PCR tests and isolate yourself immediately. Now let me share with you case scenarios among families infected with COVID. This will serve as your guide on how to do isolation and quarantine. The father of Casey developed symptoms of fever, cough, and colds last March 31. RT-PCR done on April 1 showed positive for SARS-CoV-2. Mother and Casey are asymptomatic. Father was isolated on April 1. Last exposure of mother and Casey to the father was April 1. Last exposure means the last day the infected person and exposed were together. How long should the father be isolated? We isolate him because he has symptoms and is considered contagious. If symptoms continue to be mild, we isolate him 10 days from start of symptoms. Onset of symptoms is the first day of illness, which is March 31. Isolate the father from March 31 to April 9. April 9 is the 10th day of illness, the last day of isolation. We isolate a person from the start of symptoms, not from the date of PCR test. How long will mother and Casey be quarantined? Mother and Casey are considered close contacts of the father since they live in the same household and they don't have symptoms yet. Quarantine is 14 days from last exposure to father. Last day of exposure that the family was together was April 1. April 1 is counted as day zero plus 14 days, so the last day of quarantine is April 15. 
what if the mother during quarantine suddenly develops symptoms of cough and fever on April 5? RT-PCR done on April 6 was positive. Can she now join her husband in one room? The answer is yes. Infected people can be together in one room. So it will be Casey who will be separated from them. How long will the mother be isolated? Even if she was supposed to end quarantine on April 15, since she has symptoms already, she will start counting from day one of start of symptoms, which is April 5. If she continues to have mild symptoms, isolate 10 days from the start of symptoms. From April 5, which is day one, up to April 14, the 10th day of isolation. How long should Casey be quarantined now that her mother also developed symptoms? Last day of Casey being together with the mother was April 6, counted as day zero. Count 14 days from last exposure. April 6 is day zero plus 14 days. That will be up to April 20. Her quarantine will be extended up to April 20. If Casey continues to have no symptoms until April 20, there is no need to test Casey. But during the observation period of 14 days, anytime she develops symptoms, RT-PCR should be done. Now let's go to case two. Oscar developed symptoms of colds, cough, anosmia, or nawala ng pangamoy, and agusha, nawala ng panlasa, on April 1. RT-PCR was done on the same day and was found to be positive. He isolated himself from his family on the same day, April 1. How will you advise the close contacts of Oscar, like the family and co-workers, when it comes to quarantine and testing? Quarantine the family and co-workers for 14 days to observe signs and symptoms of COVID. April 1 is day zero, or last day that the family and co-workers were exposed to Oscar. Day one of quarantine is April 2. So you quarantine from April 2 to April 15. April 15 is the 14th day of quarantine or the last day of quarantine. Anytime during the 14 days that any of his close contacts develop symptoms of COVID, test with RT-PCR. If they do not develop symptoms for 14 days, there is no need to test. Testing is best done once a person develops symptoms. But what if his office mate cannot wait for 14 days and would like to be tested immediately? Kung hindi makapag-antay ng 14 days at gustong magpa-test, you can test from day 5 to 7 from last exposure. So last day of exposure is April 1 or counted as day 0. April 6 to 8 is day 5 to 7 from last exposure. You can do RT-PCR any day at this time. If his office mate is RT-PCR negative, he should still observe for signs and symptoms of COVID till 14 days. And that is until April 15. If during this time he developed any signs and symptoms of COVID, then he has to repeat RT-PCR testing. If, for example, one of his office mates tested positive RT-PCR on day 5 from exposure on April 6, but has no symptoms, since he is now COVID positive, he should be isolated. How long will he be isolated if he remains with no symptoms? It will be 10 days from the date the test was done. April 6 was the date the RT-PCR was done. This will be day one of isolation. Up to April 15, 10th day from the testing. End of isolation. So just a review, when we say asymptomatic but infected, it means no symptoms but RT-PCR positive. Mild severity is presence of cough or colds or fever, but no difficulty of breathing or no signs of pneumonia. Moderate to severe is presence of cough, colds, or fever with associated shortness of breath or difficulty of breathing or signs of pneumonia. Asymptomatic and mild symptoms can be managed at home or isolation facilities. 
those with moderate to severe symptoms or with pneumonia should be managed in the hospital. In isolation, if with symptoms, count from the first day of symptoms. If asymptomatic but RT-PCR positive, count from the day the patient was tested. Do not count from the time the result came out. For quarantine, day zero is the last day of exposure of the infected and exposed were together. Add 14 days from day zero for the period of quarantine. Majority of COVID infected patients have mild symptoms and are not admitted. Management is purely supportive and symptomatic. One should eat a balanced diet and should have adequate hydration. Antipyretics such as paracetamol may be given for fever and pain. Antibiotics should only be given if suspecting secondary bacterial pneumonia. In children, essential vitamins and minerals such as vitamin C, vitamin D3, and zinc as supplements may help bolster the immune system. There is insufficient evidence on the use of Lianhua, melatonin, or ivermectin in the treatment of COVID. The appropriate caregiver of the child should be a person who is in good health, non-elderly, and with no underlying comorbidities and immunocompromising conditions. If possible, infected persons should be in a well-ventilated single room and if available, should use a separate bathroom. Limit the patient's movements in the house and minimize shared space. Household members exposed to the infected should stay in a different room or if that is not possible, maintain a distance of at least one meter from the infected. All household members should wear a surgical mask when in the same room as the infected. All household members should practice hand hygiene, hand washing or use of alcohol-based hand rub, following contact with an infected person. We should also teach children how to do hand hygiene. Use dedicated dishes, drinking glasses, cups, eating utensils, towels, and beddings. Cover one's mouth and nose during coughing or sneezing, using tissue or inner part of the elbow or sleeves, followed by hand hygiene. Clean high-touch surfaces daily like counters, tabletops, doorknobs, bathroom faucets, toilets, phones, keyboards, tablets, and bedside tables. Use regular disinfectant or cleaning products. Children younger than two years old should not wear masks and face shield due to risk of suffocation. This also includes anyone who has difficulty or trouble breathing with cognitive or respiratory impairment and anyone who is unconscious or incapacitated. When do you seek emergency medical attention? If there is difficulty of breathing, seizure or convulsion or changes in sensorium, progressive abdominal pain, persistent diarrhea or vomiting with poor oral intake or signs of dehydration, fever and progressing rash or a highly irritable child, or if there is worsening of symptoms. Other guidelines when isolating at home include, have only one person in the household take care of the sick person. This caregiver should not be at increased risk for severe illness. Caregiver of the sick should minimize contact with other people in the household, especially those who are at increased risk for severe illness. Caregiver for their sick person should be different from caregiver for other members of the household who are not infected. Avoid sharing personal items like phones, dishes, cups, utensils, towels, bedding, or toys with a person who is sick. Do not have visitors in your home. Do not let your child play with other kids outside the household. The sick person should stay in isolation until they meet the criteria to end home isolation. If the infected person has his own bedroom, which is the ideal, he should not go out of the room. Food will be brought to the room, wash separately infected person's utensils, separate laundry for his clothes, do not shake dirty laundry. Use warm water. If need to go out on common areas, need to wear a mask. But what if you share a bedroom with someone who is sick? 
make sure the room has good airflow. Place beds at least one to two meters apart. If this isn't possible, sleep head to toe. You may put a physical divider around the sick person's bed. If the home has more than one bathroom, one bathroom should be dedicated for use by the sick person. If the bathroom has to be shared by sick and well people in the home, remember that the virus can be excreted through the feces. The toilet should only be flushed with the lid closed. Surfaces in the bathroom such as countertops, toilet handles, doorknobs, and other frequently touched surfaces should be cleaned with disinfecting household cleaner after the sick person uses the bathroom. Keep toothbrushes, floss, facial wash, etc. away from the toilet. The sick person should wear a mask when using the bathroom if possible. Make sure the bathroom has good airflow. Open a window or turn on an exhaust fan. If the sick person can clean the bathroom after using, have them clean and disinfect it after each use. If this is not possible, the caregiver should wear a mask and disposable gloves and wait as long as practical after the sick person has used the bathroom before going in to clean. If the parent or caregiver is too ill to care for the child, look for a caregiver outside of the home with whom the child can stay. The caregiver should not be someone who is at higher risk for severe illness from COVID as the child has likely been exposed to the virus. If, for example, you found a temporary caregiver to your child outside your home, the child should stay inside the caregiver's home until 14 days after their last close contact with a sick person. If the child gets sick, the caregiver should then quarantine for 14 days after the last day the caregiver had contact with a sick child. Our homes are considered an enclosed space. We need proper ventilation. Without ventilation, infectious aerosols can aggregate in the air. The greater the number of infectious aerosols in the air, the greater the risk to healthy people, even if they are further than two meters away from the infectious person. Respiratory droplets are heavier and fall to the ground immediately while aerosol is lighter and floats in the air for long periods of time and can travel long distance. So ventilation is very important to remove aerosol in the air. How can we improve ventilation at home? Open the doors and windows as much as you can to bring in fresh outdoor air. While it's better to open them wide, even having a window cracked open slightly can help. Consider using a window exhaust fan if you have one. Turn on the exhaust fan in your bathroom and kitchen. Place a fan as close as possible to an open window blowing outside. This helps get rid of virus particles in your home by blowing air outside. Even without an open window, fans can improve airflow. Point fans away from people. Pointing fans toward people can possibly cause contaminated air to flow directly at them. Use ceiling fans to help improve airflow in the home, whether or not windows are open. For those in enclosed spaces with limited windows, consider portable high efficiency particulate air or HEPA cleaner. This picture shows you what happens to a house after being visited by an infected person. The house above has poor ventilation. There is no open window, no fans, no portable air cleaner. The virus remained in the air for a long period of time, even one hour after the infected person left the house. The house below has good ventilation, open windows, ceiling fan, exhaust fan, blowing air outside, and a portable air cleaner. The viral particles have disappeared one hour after the infected person left because of good airflow. With good ventilation, the concentration of virus particles in the air will be lower and they will leave your home faster than with poor ventilation. Non-pharmaceutical interventions remains the same. Mask, hugas, iwas. But now we are also emphasizing the value of hanging labas, 
or airflow to stand for ventilation, which is equally important. Even when riding a car, best to open windows for ventilation. What do we do for COVID-infected mothers and their newborns? They can breastfeed their babies. Mothers should cover nose and mouth when coughing and sneezing. Wear a mask, especially when breastfeeding. Wash hands before and after touching the baby. Clean and disinfect surfaces. What are the essentials needed when caring for an infected individual at home? Thermometer, with or without pulse oximeter, gloves, mask, alcohol, disinfectant, soap, tissue papers, paracetamol, cough or cold medications, vitamins, other maintenance medications, water or fluid or oral rehydrating solution, and designate in advance dishes, towels, beddings to be used. Emergency contacts list of family, friends, drivers, healthcare providers, employers, and the local public health department. And a notebook to write down the sick person's temperature and symptoms. For those who have symptoms of COVID, who would need financial assistance for testing, or for hospitalization or for isolation or quarantine, call your BERT or Barangay Health Emergency Response Team. They can assist you in testing, monitoring symptoms, and if need to be hospitalized. If an RT-PCR is done on a family member and turns out positive, the local government unit is informed by the testing laboratory. The LG will contact you and give you some advice on how to monitor symptoms and they also offer free RT-PCR testing for all those who are exposed. The BERT can also help you look for temporary treatment monitoring facilities for those people who would want to isolate in these facilities instead of home isolation. This is an example of how the Quezon City app help people with COVID symptoms. Other LGUs have this as well. They have advisories regarding COVID, QR code for consultation. They can assist you in testing, monitoring symptoms, and if need to be hospitalized. These are the contact numbers that you can call for assistance. Different numbers for different LGUs or call 1555 for one COVID referral center. They can provide free testing for those who have symptoms of COVID, provide quarantine and isolation facilities if you need one. For those who need admission to a hospital, it will be worth calling one hospital command so they can assist you on what hospitals are available. There are also available free teleconsult centers launched by the Department of Health for COVID and non-COVID concerns. It is important that those who are doing home isolation will have a doctor monitor their symptoms through teleconsult. For those who are having emotional and mental health crisis because of COVID, this is the National Center for Health for Mental Health Hotlines. In summary, the surge of COVID cases is real. It is affecting not one, but the whole family and several families. Once a member of the family is infected, he should isolate while the rest of the household should quarantine. You separate the sick and the exposed to prevent further transmission of the virus. Not all household contacts will get the disease. Isolate the contagious person, quarantine the exposed or close contacts. Isolation for mild and asymptomatic is 10 days. Moderate to severe is 21 days from symptom onset. Quarantine is 14 days from last day of exposure. Caregiver of a child or sick person should not be someone who is at high risk of having a severe disease like the elderly or those with comorbidities. Home isolation ideally should have his own room and bathroom and is only for mild and asymptomatic. If there is not enough space at home or by choice, one can go to temporary treatment monitoring facilities provided by the government. For those doing home isolation or quarantine, observe mask, hugas, iwas, hanging labas, or airflow. 
disinfect commonly touched surfaces or things. Teleconsult with a physician regarding your progress while doing home isolation. Know the emergency signs and symptoms that should prompt you to go to the hospital. Know emergency numbers of your barangay or LGUs. We have to protect our family. Once you decide to do home isolation for COVID, we should continue to protect other family members of the family from getting COVID. Thank you for your kind attention. She -she. Thank you so much, Dr. Luna, for that very informative presentation. And we now move on to the Q&A and we would like to invite everyone to drop their questions at the Zoom chat box or for those watching on YouTube, just type in your questions. And this is truly a rare chance to be able to ask Doc Imelda. And of course, we would like to welcome back our panelists, Jane, and of course, my co-moderator, Doc Mark. Yes, Valerie, thank you. And um, I, uh, I hope you learned some um, new words in your vocabulary, Valerie, so I can test you now. So what does anosmia and agusia mean? Ay, nako. Yung anosmia cannot smell. Dama, tama, di ba? <laughs> Very good. How about agusia? <laughs> teacher na teacher talaga si Doc Mark, di ba? Dama. Testing. Pero ikaw, Parang Jane. Parang sinjud na sinjud, ah. Yes. Talagang, yes. ano to, buzzer, mauna. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, I'm busy namin din sa Viber. We were talking about um, Doc's... Uh, presentation. Doc, yeah, presentation nga. Uh, I think I listed up quite a few questions with um, nawala sa lights kasi busy sa Viber. Okay. Mm. Um, Doc, what you sinabi mo kanya earlier part, he said that even for post-infection, when you get tested, minsan lumalabas pa rin that you're positive even until 83 days. Yes. So yes. what do you do pag ganyan? Kasi nakakapalik, parang ha, tagal ko nang... Are you really infected pa din? How do you gauge then? Uh, so that's why for those who are infected and those with symptoms, so depending on the symptom severity, if, if asymptomatic or mild, 10 days of isolation will do. Meaning after 10 days, the, the person is not infectious anymore or is not considered contagious. So even if you repeat the test, it can still be positive up to three months. So we don't do repeat testing just to say that the patient has recovered. Okay. So depending on the severity on how long will you isolate. So isolation is parang yun yung contagiousness period. Okay. Mm. So I think it's also best that you coordinate with the doctor. Hindi to self-test na parang. Kasi hindi, most... Kung mm -hmm. sundot ka lang sundot sa ilong, eh positive ng positive, kawawa naman yung... yung oh, oh. But, Doc, like, one more, di ba ang dami ng COVID strains? So, it doesn't mean, what you said na, you don't recommend, even if you're asymptomatic, you don't recommend getting tested again. But what if you get another strain and you're again asymptomatic? Possible ba yun? So, um, after three months, no, uh, di ba, you, you get infected. So, you can be positive for approximately three months and you're now well. But, when three months has passed and you have uh, recur you have symptoms again of possible COVID, uh, you can get tested. After so three months. But ano, gumaling ka na. You have clinically recovered. Then after three months, if you develop same signs and symptoms, uh, you can get tested again. Yeah. And uh, yeah. When, when you test, diba, una kasi, you just test if it's positive or not. Diba? Positive ba siya sa COVID or not? And then the lab uh, uh, submits some of the specimens to the Philippine Genomic Center mm -hmm. for checking of variants, but not all. So the lab uh, selects uh, specimens that will be submitted to the Philippine Genomic Center. So for example, a community has, an, parang biglang ang dami-dami dito sa community ito ang may COVID. So magtataka, ba't kaya ang taas-taas ng COVID dyan? So they, they submit specimens to the Philippine Genomic Center coming from this community. Or also for OFWs coming here, chinecheck din nila for variants. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Doc, may nag-pop na question. That's actually my next question from Alfred now. We all, that was what I was thinking as well. Ang dami kasi nagabenta, Viber, Facebook, mga antigen saliva tests. They do self-testing at home. Ah, okay. Sa mga planning, di ba? Yung mga hindi makahintay na parang 
I don't want to call them or while we're, while we're waiting for them to come do home service, I'll test myself first para hindi na, hindi ako maplaning. So what, what Pero, do you think of those? Ka- possible ba nagkamali ka? Like parang yung mali yung oh, upa, gawa mo ng I mean, yung saliva antigen or yung improper? Uh, meron ding technique. Kaya mas maganda talagang iba ang mag-work. So, um, magkaiba kasi yung uh, saliva antigen tsaka sa saliva um, RT-PCR test. Okay, so mas ni uh, ang ang equivalent or what we accept is the saliva RT-PCR equivalent siya sa nasopharyngeal swab RT-PCR test. So we don't recommend the saliva antigen. What we may use, okay, for example, there is a shortage of nasopharyngeal RT-PCR. We can use nasopharyngeal swab rapid antigen test. Okay, so magkaiba siya sa saliva. Okay, so the rapid antigen test using the nasopharyngeal swab may be used if there is a shortage or there's no available RT-PCR test. But remember that if your rapid antigen test is positive, then COVID ka na. We treat you as COVID. But for example, your rapid antigen test is negative, but you have symptoms. We all know that antigen test is less sensitive than the RT-PCR. So you mm-hmm. still have to confirm a negative rapid antigen test with an RT-PCR test. So merong ano, uh, uh, may limitation yung mga test. So you just have to know what the limitations are. Kung positive, okay. Pero kung negative, hindi. But saliva yeah. antigen test is still not acceptable. Nasopharyngeal swab antigen test, yes. Saliva RT-PCR, yes. Mm-mm. So, Doc, though, you mentioned it. Dapat it's done by a registered medical practitioner. Yes. Hindi ka advisable mga home kits? Um, you, if somebody who knows. Okay. okay. So for example, uh, a nurse knows how to do it. A medical technology knows how to do it. A doctor knows how to do it. Basta somebody who was trained. Even... Mm-hmm yung barangay health emergency response team that goes to the houses, yung for free swabbing, uh, rename lang sila on how to do it. Uh, so somebody who is trained to do it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we have a follow-up question yes. by Alfred. Same uh, person, Alfred. When is the best time daw to do the antigen test, if ever? Oh, the antigen test is best done during the first five days of... Five to seven, no? Yeah. Yung, uh, usually, hanggang five days. After five days, nagne-negative na siya. Unlike the RT-PCR. That's five to seven days after you are exposed? From, from the onset of symptoms. Of yes. symptoms rin. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, to do yeah. the test when you have symptoms. Yeah. All right. Next question is from Mary Grace Libutan. If a child has been exposed and currently having fever and rashes in the hands, is it a symptom of COVID and what should we do? Uh, you mean the child was exposed to somebody with COVID? Yes, yeah. yes. So possibly, yes. And for children, uh, lately I've been seeing uh, what we call multisystemic inflammatory um, syndrome in children related to COVID. And they present with fever and rash and conjunctivitis. So these are children who have been exposed to family members who had COVID. Minsan, Minsan hindi walang symptoms pero after several weeks bigla na lang silang magfi-fever, rash and conjunctivitis. So, yes, it can be a uh, an indication of COVID also in children, the rash. So, pag ganun kailangan pa swab test na. Sorry, Doc Mark. Yes, yes. Again, okay. And should be evaluated because MISC is a uh, should be ad- children with MISC should be admitted. So kailangan ma-evaluate ng doctor. You can do teleconsult first with your pediatrician and then makikita naman ng pediatrician sa ano yan, sa screen, di ba? And then the pediatrician will guide you if the child really needs to be admitted. But if she is considering MISC, we admit those children. Doc Mark, go ahead. Well, perhaps a corollary to that question is uh, what's the difference between uh, the symptoms in adults and in children. Uh, you mentioned the conjunctivitis and all. No? Uh, is this is this similar to the adults or the uh, or just or do we see just 
uh, these chest and babies. Okay. So, um, children can have symptoms very similar to adults. So, they can present with fever or cough or colds. And usually, they have mild symptoms. The rash and the conjunctivitis that I'm saying is that it's uh, a syndrome that occurs a month after being exposed to COVID. Meaning, uh, nakikita ko to sa buong pamilya nagkaroon, yung child pwedeng walang symptom during the time or uh, mild symptoms lang and then gumaling na sila lahat a month after the child may develop fever again, rash, conjunctivitis. So it's a post-infectious sequelae of COVID in children. It's not common but it's i've been seeing it lately it's parang if you know kawasaki the symptoms are similar to kawasaki disease mm -hmm. okay our next question is from beth lim chu since meron tayong symptomatic and asymptomatic how would you know if it's covid or when should we treat it as covid kasi to her all sick sicknesses seems like covid daw nowadays yeah that's true no um Yung fever, cough, colds, they are just like influenza. They are just like your common colds. So, but since um, COVID is the current thing, um, if you have symptoms of cough, colds, or fever, it's best to, to test. Kasi para at least ma-isolate mo ng sarili mo if it's really COVID or not. So, when do we see asymptomatic? Kasi di ba minsan may mga pag mayroong may COVID, yung mga nakapaligid, di ba, sometimes they check themselves. They already have themselves tested or yun nga, yung hindi makapag-antay ng 14 days, gusto nang magpa-test, so they are tested. And sometimes, nak walang symptoms pero positive for COVID. So, yun yung mga asymptomatic. Okay. So, pag positive ka na, kahit wala kang symptoms, you still have to isolate yourself. So, basta meron kang symptoms ng cough, cold, fever, you have to isolate yourself immediately even while waiting for the swab because you are already contagious. Mm -hmm. Okay, a follow-up question by Beth. No? What if someone gets sick in the home, then gets well after a day or two? Should we still test everyone in the household? Actually, we don't. Uh, actually, when uh, during my lecture, I said that when you have symptoms, you isolate immediately. And that person should isolate and observe herself and be tested. So depending on sa result niya, for example, positive said, definite na COVID siya, no? So if mild, 10 days siya mag-isolate. Yung ibang nasa house, i-quarantine lang sila, di ba? They will just observe themselves. If they have symptoms for the next 14 days, that's the time that they will be tested, okay? Now, if, if for example, the person who has symptoms became well in two days, you see, even if your COVID swab is negative, I would recommend that you still observe the 10-day isolation because um, there's still the 20% chance of having a false negative test. So basta't nagka-symptoms, we isolate a minimum of 10 days. Basta't may symptoms. Okay. Okay, here's a question. Um, what is the number you get for an antibody test mean? Does the higher number of the antibody test mean that you have more antibodies because the number varies from less than 10 to up to the hundreds? Uh, okay, what antibody test, um, what antibody perhaps, test is? Perhaps the IgG tests. No? Uh, okay, so human. we have um, reliable antibody tests, the CLIA or the chemiluminescence assay and the ELISA test for um, to check if the patient has antibodies. So the presence of IgM or IgG would tell you that if the person had previous infection. So that's just it. We just check kung nagkaroon na siya ng COVID or not. Okay. It's, uh, so, the results come out quantitatively. There's a, there's a figure. Uh, there's a number. As long as it's positive, it, it, it just means that you had past infection. Si Doc Marqueta, naka-mute. Naka sorry, sorry. Okay. So what is the uh, survival rate of a 92-year-old COVID-positive patient 
in the hospital who has completed remdesivir and is go and is still well is undergoing medical treatment you now for a 92 year old to have covid uh, in the hospital it depends on the severity of the of that patient so it really depends on the course of that patient we can i cannot say that the prognosis is poor or the prognosis is good but we've read of a 100 year old grandma in the United States who survived COVID. So, mahirap sabihin. So, it really depends on the course of that patient. In general, though, we know that the higher the age, the higher the chance of mortality. Yes. yes. And uh, starts, it starts getting, uh, the mortality rate becomes higher or starts getting higher uh, starting at around the senior age, no? Up, yeah. About 60 and all, no? And the older you are, the higher the chance the, that you will not survive from COVID. Okay. Yeah. We have a next question, Jane. Yeah, we have a next question. So this is one is from Joanne Cody. So what if, mom, what if the mom is still breastfeeding her baby and what to do if mom is under isolation and COVID infected? And what to do if the mom is under quarantine for being exposed to a COVID positive patient? Um, COVID positive patient? So you know now in the, in the hospitals uh, now in the hospitals if we have COVID positive mothers and they give birth we room in the babies already as long as the mother is stable the baby is stable they we room them in regardless if the baby is infected or not we do test the baby yes but we do not separate them last year when the COVID was relatively new we tend our immediate uh, impulse was to separate them. But studies have shown, and the WHO recommendation now is to, they have to be roomed in, they can be together, the mother can breastfeed as long as the mother wears a mask and um, practices hand hygiene, uh, that's fine. And they can isolate together. So kung yung mom, mild symptoms, so 10 days silang isolation, magkasama sila nung, nung baby. Usually, you know, these babies, when they do get infected, 99% they're fine, even if they're positive, para lang, para lang silang yung normal babies. Very, very few babies succumb to COVID. That's follow good to up hear. Though, follow up though, Doc, which, does that mean the mom has to wear a surgical mask? Yes. Yeah. As much as possible, we recommend wearing a surgical mask because there's still that risk of yeah. transmitting mm -hmm. to the baby. So okay, thank you. The, uh, the mom should wear a mask when breastfeeding. Okay, we have a question from President Johnny C. Can using Bactidol throat spray at the early onset of sore throat help in preventing more serious symptoms? Because we always hear the mga Viber messages nga that Jane mentioned, ba? Pero coming from you, Doc. Uh, actually, you can use it, but you don't know until yung the duration of the effect of that betadine. Because ba it only lasts for a few seconds. So um, studies have shown, sa ngayon ha, there is insufficient evidence to say that uh, yung parang betadine spray or betadine gargle will be helpful. So insufficient evidence because yung duration of protection, we cannot predict that. So really, the, the more important thing to do is really prevention, di ba, Doc? Parang vitamins with zinc and drinking more water and sleeping longer hours. Social yeah. distance. <laughs> Yan pa. Yeah. Virtual na lang muna tayo lahat. Yes. <laughs> Actually, di ba, nag tayo. But if you look at adult recommendations, they would even say that vitamins have insufficient evidence for COVID. But for children, I was a uh, part of the one who did the clinical practice guidelines for children. Since we have data that children with respiratory illnesses like pneumonia have low vitamin D levels, low, low zinc levels, Low vitamin C. So for children, we recommend vitamin C, zinc, and vitamin D. Okay. Sorry, the follow-up lang since we're in this topic. So for the kids, vit vitamins, vitamin C plus zinc. Yan talaga ever since. Yan yung talaga I bought a lot for the kids. I stocked up. But you mentioned nga, it's not proven for adults. What are the preventive measures we can do for adults, for seniors, and then for children and babies? Actually, if you look at the adult recommendations, they would just give, say uh, supportive treatment, hydration, paracetamol, 
rest and monitoring if there will be increasing severity of symptoms. But um, doc, pag mula pang symptoms, it's just your everyday life. You go out to work, you come home, like what do you do so just to make sure you're protected? Just minimum public health standards, which is just wear mask, uh, ventilation, physical distancing, and hand hygiene. Wala, actually, wala pa talaga. Walang intake. Wala so, walang talaga. mga vitamins, mga ganyan. Para to prevent. Yeah. Sabi ko nga, wag na lang huminga para. <laughs> <laughs> sa bahay na lang talaga. Just for diba? the, Sa bahay na lang talaga. Diba? Pero, Doc, talaga, important ang sleep, no? Kasi, like, a lot of people watch online streaming shows. Yes, yes. Oh, yung, my, uh, my kids and my, my husband and my friends, wag magpuyat. For me, that's yeah. what I'm Lack of sleep makes you makes your immune system go down. Okay. So sleep is very important. Next question. Doc Mark? Yes. Um, there's a question regarding those who um, have lost some uh, household, household help, no? uh, like us. What's the protocol now uh, when hiring new help? Ah, okay. So... Yung mga bagaling yan sa mga provinces. What I uh, advise is just to quarantine the household help for 14 days. If there are no symptoms for 14 days, pwede na siyang, pwede na siyang mag-work. Doctora, uh, in your talk, we you mentioned that, that uh, in some cases we do 10 days, in some cases we do 14 days. No? Uh, what's the rationale behind to uh, to uh, to make it clear for our uh, okay. audience? No? Uh, 10 why days. Some 10, why some 14? Yeah. Is there a big difference? Yeah. When we why say not all 14 na lang? So uh, isolation means the person is infected, meaning the person is contagious. So yung, if that person has only mild symptoms, we say, isolate for 10 days minimum. So, yung 10 days kasi, yun yung nakakahawa pa siya. After 10 days, hindi na siya nakakahawa. Yung 14 days is for those who will be on quarantine. So, when you say quarantine, ito yung mga na-exposed or hindi ka sure sa history, like a household help coming from a province, hindi mo sure saan siya na-exposed during the travel. So, you quarantine them. Wala silang symptoms. You just observe them for 14 days if they will develop symptoms. So the 14 days correspond to the incubation period of the virus. When you say incubation period, this is the time you were exposed to somebody with COVID and you develop symptoms. So kaya matagal kasi yung virus takes sometimes 2 to 14 days before mag-develop ng symptoms. Now kung gusto nyo para hindi kayo malito, okay lang naman gawin yung 14 days. Kaya lang, di ba nakakaloka yung, alam mo yung mag-quarantine ka and mag-isolate for a, such a long time. Di ba may mental health issues yun? So, so ngayon, may mga studies na na for mild symptoms, 10-day isolation is enough. But for quarantine, the best is still 14 days. All right. Um, so, can I, sorry, another follow-up question. Since we, we also started on about household health, this has, I think, has not been addressed often, but a lot of us have household help at home. We have drivers. Some are stay at home. Some, some are stay out. How do we, um, one, how do we deal with the drivers that go home? Um, and next and after, sige, first muna yung mga drivers or those um, yeah. mga boy natin uh, who go home every day. How do we, uh, what's the precautionary measures for that? My driver is a nos, a stay out, so daily siya. No? So what I do is uh, I always ask him if he has symptoms and I, I, I told him to be honest if he will have symptoms. And then automatically sa car, our, the windows are open. Naka-open ang aircon pero naka-open ang, ang bintana kasi ventilation is really very important. And naka-face mask ako and face shield. So... Ventilation, mass and face shield, I think that that will be enough. And you really have to trust the, your driver to tell you honestly if they have signs and symptoms of COVID. Um, for uh, yung mga household help na, di ba, nag the day off and all. Yes. My household help knows that when she goes on a day off, she will be on quarantine. And she has experienced this already. So 
ayaw niya nang ulitin kasi maloloka daw siyang naka-quarantine sa kwarto with, uh, alam mo, not going out, yung ganun. So, pero kung yung galing province papasok pa lang sa'yo, um, yun, 14 days of quarantine, that's, that's the best. Pero yung iba gustong mag-test, well, you can do testing on day 7. Alam mo yun, day 7 ng, from quarantine, you can do testing. Kung gusto mo lang i-check kung positive siya or negative. Kung negative, you still have to continue observing the, the household's health for 14 days. Medyo kampante ka lang na ay negative, but still you have to continue the 14 days observation. Okay. So I go ahead. Hindi kasi, syempre mom si ano, Jane, oh, oh, some concerns, di ba? I also have friends, even cousins who... Your mic, your mic is a bit parang... Ayaw. Clear, clear. Yeah, yeah. Closer, please, yes, better. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, the next question is actually, what can we remind our household help if we live in a compound, if we live in a condo? Kasi hindi mo maiwasan. So, parang yung iba pa, pag nahuli mo ng may symptoms or asymptomatic, matigas ang ulo, ayaw magpa-quarantine, it happens. Eh. So, how, I don't know, I, I'm sure you've heard more stories like this. Maybe you can impart and share with us how to deal with these case um, studies. Ibang case studies naman ito. Actually, yung household help ko, I tell them, yung wag masyado, maka- wala mo nang chi- chismis. Chika, oo. Or food. Tapos pag, kung magde-day off man siya, actually, hinahatid pa siya ng husband ko sa, kung saan siya pupunta. Para hindi na siya sumakay ng, para hindi na siya commute. sumakay. Commute. Hindi na siya mag-commute, yes. And then, susunduin uli siya kung uh, anong oras siya dadating. No? <laughs> Parang anak lang, eh, no? <laughs> Katid sundo. And we, oh, oh, eh. so, we remind her to, kahit sa pagmamamalengke siya, no, we remind her, of course, meron siyang, kami na nag-provide noon, syempre, yung face shield and the face mask. And uh, limited time lang siya mamamalengke. Alam mo yun, hindi yung one to sawa. So just for a limited time. So okay. yun, pwede wag mo nang makichika-chika and all. Kasi minsan pag chismis, akala, basta you all, laging consider mo yung katabi mo pwedeng may COVID. So, that's true. Always be careful. Don't share your air. Yep. That's true. Assume everyone and even yourself has COVID para safe tayong lahat, diba? Yes, always assume talaga. Yes. Okay, Doc, our next question is from Elaine Chua. Do you have any updates regarding the Indian COVID variant? Any information we need to know regarding this variant? Yeah, it's, um, I think today lang ba, uh, it's already a variant of concern. So, meaning, um, medyo, it's being investigated and being studied. Kasi when you say variant, ang, ang question doon eh, nun is that, parang nag-mutate siya, di ba? So nagbago na naman siya ng anyo. No? Na, nag siyang mas matalinong uh, virus. So the question now is, is it more virulent, meaning will cause a more severe disease, or is it more transmissible, mas nakakahawa siya? So yun yung problem with the variants. And Ang next question din is, will the vaccines that were given to us be able to protect us from this variant? Basta today it has been announced that it is now a variant of concern. So they are still uh, waiting. Uh, We're still waiting for the announcement or the statement from the World Health Organization on these variants. Pero yun lang. Siyempre, vaccination, will it be protected? Is it more transmissible? Or will it cause a more se- severe disease? Okay, so I guess we have to read and wait for more information about it. Okay, next question is from Alfred Nang. Many families eat together during meals, so do you recommend they eat separately to prevent infection, especially for those members na who regularly go out to work or grocery stores? Yeah, I know of some families who are already, they, parang they don't eat together anymore. But, pero ako... <laughs> Even if I go out and I do see uh, I do see COVID patients every day, um, I still eat together with the family. Kasi yun na lang yung time ko with them. Okay? But um, as I've mentioned, no, the Department of Health has already said na kahit yung mga lumalabas, kailangan nakamask sa house. Okay? And then kung pwede, yun, uh, hiwa-hiwalay or magkakalayo kumain. Yun yung inaano nilang recommendation. And I know of some families who practices that. Pero ako, hindi pa. We, we still eat together. 
Doktora, kawawa naman kung tayo mga doktora, no? When we go to the hospital, we come home, we have to do, we have to mask again and uh, isolate ourselves, no? Uh, even my dog doesn't under, doesn't know me anymore. <laughs> Why even dogs can get COVID? <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's why, no? Actually, my brother's a doctor. Nandun siya sa kabilang room and they don't live together with my parents. Parang kawawa, no? But, pero yung mga doktor, mabuhay kayo, ah. Thank you so much for doing this for our country. Thank you so much. Di ba? Bak- mag-iyakan, eh. <laughs> so, talaga, I mean, di ba? To eat alone, my brother in, and to, in the other house. Meron kaming ano, connecting house. So, doon na siya mag-isa whenever he's in. Di ba talaga? Yes, ano? yeah, yung ibang doctors, I know, they they have their own room na. Yung ganon. Mm-hmm. Parang nagsasay hi, hello na lang siya from office. Yeah, but it's important to check on everyone talaga. The mental health is also an issue. Lalo na, we're on our second year. Nakaka, nakakakaba. Affect talaga. talaga. Nakaka-affect yes. talaga, yes. Okay, uh, Doc, we have our next question from Beth Lim Chu again. How should we deal with staff who are hesitant to be vaccinated? Anong tips uh, to be able to convince them? Kasi they're getting so many uh, false information daw in social media. Um, kasi usually, no, hindi, hindi yun... Uh, parang di kaya ng isang usapan lang. So, dapat ini-engage mo siya and uh, explain. Hindi siya yung parang isang bagsakan. So, parang dapat nagkakwentuhan lang kayo. Ask them, what are their concerns? Why are they hesitant? And tell them um, uh, yung, yung advantages ng vaccine. Tapos, pwede mong sabihin that, you know, yung polio nga, kaya wala nang may polio ngayon kasi majority are already vaccinated. Tapos, may mga na-eradicate na tayong disease like smallpox because of vaccination. And the vaccine, the COVID vaccine, will add a layer, uh, another layer of protection um, from COVID. Okay? And then, parang probably it, it will help us in getting out of this pandemic. And minsan, minsan tinatakot ko pa nga, how will you feel if you were eligible for vaccination and you didn't avail of it and then nahawa mo ang nanay mo o anak mo and naging severe sila? How would you feel? Meron ka ng chance magpa-vaccine tapos hindi ka pa nagpa-vaccine. O kaya, dati may nag-interview sa akin, sabi ko, hindi ka nagpa-vaccine, pwede ba wag ka rin magpa-check up sa hospital kung magka-COVID ka para hindi rin kami mahawa. Sorry, medyo mataray lang. Kasi minsan, syempre, um, as much as possible, we want majority of the Filipino people to be protected para somehow we can have um, herd protection or herd immunity. Doc, follow-up question since we're talking about the vaccine. Na rin. Um, I've asked this to my sa brother ko and to all the doc- doctors, but I want our audience to hear it from you as well. Any vaccine is good, but do we wait? I do we wait? Any vaccine is for the right vaccine ba? Kasi may mga namimili eh. Nagtatanong pa, ay, anong available? Ay, pasa ko. So, I wanted, we want to hear your thoughts on that. Okay. You know, when, di ba, A1 kami, no? Yung healthcare workers are A1. Sabi, uh, so, priority kami bibigyan ng vaccine. And initially, ang sabi, ang vaccine namin was Pfizer. So, sabi na, wow, Pfizer. And then, until now, wala pa rin Pfizer. Wala pa rin Moderna. So, there's, there's the Chinese the China's vaccine, the Sinovac, the Astra. And then, um, so, syempre parang nalungkot ka, no? Kasi yung talaga, syempre parang gusto mo rin yung Pfizer and yung Moderna and the, the other. Pero when I was, you know, studying the literature and um, parang inaano kong sarili ko, should I receive the, the Chinese vaccine or not? I saw not all vaccines can prevent 100% severe disease or being hospitalized or dying from the disease itself. So 100% siya. For the mild symptoms or yung any clinical disease, yun yung medyo mababa yung Sinovac, mga 50%, sabi 50%, 60%, 70%. So meaning, ano ba yung 50%? Ano ba yung 60%? Meaning, I can still have fever, I can still have cough and colds. Parang natrangkaso lang ako but I will not be hospitalized. I will not have the severe disease. I will not die from COVID. It's just like having your influenza vaccine. There's no influenza vaccine that is 100% uh, protective uh, 
protective, meaning if you have the influenza vaccine, chances are the protection is just 70%, meaning you can still have flu, but the thing is you will not get hospitalized because of flu, because you have the flu vaccine. So yun na lang ang inano ko sa, sa mind ko na it can protect me 100% from severe disease, from getting hospitalized, and from dying from the disease. So the best vaccine is whatever vaccine is now available. Don't wait for what you, what you are in for the better vaccine or the best vaccine. I've known of a friend's father who recently died because he didn't, siya sa... he didn't avail of what yes. the present available vaccine is because he was waiting for the better vaccine. Time now, is so essential now, eh, di ba? Nakakaan siya yes. ng virus. Kasi ang tagal nung gusto mong vaccine, eh baka di dumating. Doc, another question. So, myth ba o totoo na um, once you get vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask? Kasi alam mo, ibang tao ka. So, um, napaka-konti pa lang ng vaccinated sa Philippines. So, again, the vaccine is just a layer of protection. We should not stop from wearing our face mask, our face shield, physical distancing, and ventilation. We should continue using it even if we're vaccinated right now. Um, hindi tayo katulad ng Amerika kasi pag binasa mo yung U.S., Pwede, di ba may mga guidelines na sila na pag parehas kayo vaccinated, pwede na kayong magtanggal. That is because marami na sa kanila ang na-vaccinate. Eh dito sa atin, ilang percent pa lang ang na-vaccinate. So we cannot afford removing all those barrier protections even if you're vaccinated. Doc, another question. Siyo marami nagtanong sa chat box rin. Clear ba? May sound. Um, if you get, kunyari, your First dose of vaccine is different from the second dose. Is that okay? Is the effectivity the same? Sa ngayon kasi, there's no recommendation of giving another brand for the second dose. So ngayon, ang recommendation pa lang is same brand ang first and second dose. Wala pang recommendation that you can give another dose. We have to wait for that. So you have to wait. Kunyari, naka-first dose ka na, pero ang dumating na next vaccine is not the first dose that you got. Pabibigyan kung different brand. It will be the same brand. We have to oh, wait for iba, eh. kung pwede na yung ibang vaccine ang ibibigay sa'yo. Sa ngayon kasi wala pang studies. Kulang pa, no? Wait for that. Okay. We have okay. the next question from Alfred. As a rule of thumb, can we say that all vaccines will work at full protection only two weeks after the second dose? Tama yeah. ba yun? Yes. That's two correct. Two after the second dose. Pag first dose, do you have some sort of protection or it's as good as zero? We are starting to produce antibodies, but it's not enough. Okay. I think, Doc, like a lot of us, hindi pa rin nakaka-vaccine kami. Um, I think it's good to share with our audience. I think it's good to share with our audience what um what to expect when you get vaccinated maganda bang ihati like my parents got hinatid namin talaga they didn't drive because nga pwedeng kumina sila after the vaccination uh, what to expect ano? yes yes so we know also because diba we have parents and we have children so parang we have to take care of our parents as well who are seniors so what do we do? how do we take care of them and even our husbands our siblings who might need our help when they get vaccinated and vice versa yeah, yun lang sa mga vaccination centers. Minsan lang kasi pila, no? Uh, usually sa mga public schools. So, pero majority of the public schools naman, open air naman siya. Kaya lang sobrang init naman. <laughs> so, you, you just have to remind them na wag magtanggal ng mask. Kumain before pumunta sa vaccination area. At yung wag kumain doon or uminom kasi magtatanggal ka ng mask. And then wag makipag-usap sa kung kani-kanino kung hindi naman importante. And then may may dalang alcohol like that. And then try as much as possible to uh, have physical dis distancing with other people. It really takes time lining up for in the vaccination center. Kasi may sinamahan na ako ang tagal talaga mga 2 hours. Mm -hmm. Although open naman yung parang open gymnasium ganun. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, my mother-in-law had her ano, first dose then. Uh, mabilis naman. Sa Manila LG, it was fast. Parang 30 minutes lang. So, I guess, bring candy na lang, no? Mga ganun. And fan, mainit. So, kapag punta mo doon, hindi yes, ka mag- di mo na tanggalin. Oo oh, nga, no? Yes, yes, yes. Tama, tama. Yes. And, Doc Mark. And go to the CR na before you go. Ay, That's true. Na tama, tama, tama. Yeah, there's a question here. Uh, perhaps they they're not very clear regarding antibodies and antigen and IgG. No, so the the question is: Is a person who is tested positive for IgG considered less a risk to be with, since theoretically they do not harbor virus, since their antibodies destroy them? Uh, so it. So, kung positive ka sa antibody test, it's just say it's it's just saying that you probably had the infection in the past. But is it fully? Is it the it provide full protection from the virus or the next virus? We do not know yet. So, having uh, antibodies, you should not be parang sort of, ah, may antibodies na ako, pwede na ako hindi mag and all. Having antibodies, you do not know how fully protected you are with those antibodies. So you still have to continue protecting yourself. And what we do not know, in fact, is how long, no? How long? The, the antibodies will stay with us, no? Even if you've been vaccinated and you get the IgG antibodies, you don't know how long. We still are not sure about the duration. Yeah. Kay- I think, go ahead. There are studies studying kung kailangan natin ng booster dose kasi nga baka nga mag yung immune. Correct. Kasi so far it's Pfizer lang na nakalabas na their, uh, the protection is up to six months. Meron pa rin. But beyond that, uh, we don't know. Of course, for the other vaccines, we're still uh, getting the uh, studies, no? the results uh, for the other vaccines to know how long the duration of protection can be or if we need booster doses later on. So, kailangan talaga mag ng mask up until the next few months or next few year at least. Diba? Until our doctora, di ba? You agree okay. until the uh, the uh, cases come down and until, well, the IATF gives us the go signal that we can be an open society once again. Kailangan mm-hmm. convince muna tayo magpa-vaccinate majority of those who are eligible for vaccination. Saka kailangan yung supply. No? <laughs> Diba? You know, big, uh, big, uh, biggest problem that we have, we have the lack of supply of the vaccines. Perhaps uh, Kuya Johnny or Sir Johnny can uh, provide us all with free vaccines. Speaking of Sir Johnny, he has a question. No? Uh, Doc Imelda, can the fully vaccinated person shed the virus similarly to the polio vaccine derived virus strain? Uh, the available vaccines for COVID are inactivated. They are not live, unlike the oral poliovirus, which is live. Kaya mo na siya shed. Kaya mo siya na siya shed sa poop. So yung inactivated vaccines or the COVID vaccines, you do not shed them because they are inactivated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No way of shedding it. Mm-hmm. You mentioned kanina, Doc, no, na parang wala pa tayong studies kung pwedeng ipagsabay yung dalawang vaccine. Kasi... We have a question from Alfred. Sabi niya, gusto niyang, ay, he's thinking of doing two brands. Okay ba yun? Will it improve his protection more? Napakasing recommendations. We have to wait for uh, recommendations. We will get there. Baka, pero sa ngayon kasi wala eh. So sa ngayon, same brand lang. And then wala pang sinasabing after two doses, if you want another one, if you can have, wala pa rin recommendations. So we have to wait. Mm-hmm. There's a question on YouTube. Um, I think kasi, Doc, it's really overwhelming, Lala, for first time to watch your presentation. So as, what are the protocols if ever COVID hits home? Like, do we have a checklist to print out ba natin? Kasi ang dami kailangan gawin eh, nakaka-overwhelmed. You have to isolate. Yung may symptoms talagang isolate. So, um, kung, if you have enough space or enough room, then, syempre, own room, own bedroom, own toilet. If you have limited space, you can bring the infected to the COVID ligtas center or quarantine facilities uh, provided by the government. 
Pero kung may, sep, may own room ka talaga, pwedeng doon siya for approximately 10 days, kung mild lang naman siya. And then, dadalhan mo siya ng food doon. Tapos, hindi siya lalabas doon. Lahat doon niya na, I mean, may sarili siyang uh, CR, nandun na yung medicines niya to take. And then, you can just do parang uh, parang video call to see how how that person is. Yeah. Kasi usually supportive treatment lang naman, hydration, rest, vitamins, sleep. Okay. All right, we have a question from Karen C. If you get vaccinated with Sinovac, you've mentioned that we will not suffer from the serious effects of the virus. But we can still get a positive test result. That's a question. Tama, di ba? Still possible. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, parang, um, kasi hanggang ngayon, wala, wala pang vaccine yung parang can prevent uh, transmissibility of the virus. But So if the question is, can you still be positive for the virus? Yes, you can still have but you don't get but you don't get the positive result because of the vaccine. That's right. Right. Yes, that's right. mm -hmm. So you're like an asymptomatic carrier. Parang but If nahawa ka afterwards, uh -oh. if nahawa ka, tama no? Pero mild if ever. Not because of the vaccine but because of the virus. Mm -hmm. All right, next question is from Lilith Kai. So if the adult is fully vaccinated, possible pa din to transmit COVID virus to their kids. Yeah. Carrier if, pwede. If fully vaccinated, pwede ka pa rin maging carrier. Uh, if fully vaccinated, kasi pwede pa rin siyang ma-infect. Pwede niya pa rin mahawa yung kids. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Again, we would like There's, to invite everyone yeah. to just drop in their questions dito sa Zoom chat box or at the YouTube comment sections. There's Go another ahead. question um, from Melicia Lucidine. Does team inhalation help you in fighting COVID? Uh, no, there's... Uh, uh, kasama din yan sa recommendations in insufficient uh, evidence to support steam inhalation to fight COVID. Okay. And be careful, ha? Kasi baka magka-scald burn kayo. <laughs> kasi di ba mainit na tubig yun na hinihinga. So no. Okay. Okay. Guys, you heard it na from Doc Imelda. Diba? <laughs> may isa pa, may ako may isang question pa. Diba noon, everyone was panicking on what to buy for the COVID protocols at home. Now naman, dahil emergency rooms are so full, lines are, diba, ang haba ng lines, some are getting, are being asked to go home na lang and then buy oxygen tanks. Now, kumakalit na sa all the social media platforms, so people are selling oxygenators. But what are your thoughts on that, Doc? Just make sure you know how to operate it. And syempre, gagamitin mo lang siya talaga dun sa mga patients na who really needs it. But be careful lang kasi mama hindi, kayo, hindi nyo alam paano gamitin, sumabog yan, magkasunog pa kayo and all. So just make sure you know how to operate it. That's the oxygen tank, Doc. But what about the machine na oxygenator ba yun? The one that compresses and... Pure. Parang, di ba, mas, mas puro yung oxygen at home? Kaya nga, uh, there should be somebody supervising you. Pati on... yun, hindi siya like a regular, like me, pwede ko i-gamitin. Yes. Kasi ngayon, everyone's selling it. Eh, parang it looks like a home appliance. Di ba? Pulse oximeter pa, yes. Just to check yes, your... I have that rin. <laughs> Actually, dun sa home essential kit ko, di, hindi ko sinama yung oxygen kasi... It's something, it's a drug, diba? It's a drug. So it should be used by somebody who knows how to use it. Plus, I feel palagi paubos yung stocks niyan, and I don't want to hoard. Parang there are so many people who need it, parang in moderation. Like before, N95, lahat moving. Oh, ito, isa pa daw, question. Like how long or how many hours do you use your N95? What's the best mass to use? Second, how long do you use it and then you throw away? Is it like for a day, eight hours being surgical mask, you throw it na? Kasi some, di ba? Lalo na nung ka-shortage, ni reuse niya lagay sa UV box. For the general public, uh, surgical mask is fine. Even cloth mask is fine for the general public. But for healthcare workers, what we recommend is really the surgical mask for non-COVID wards. And then for COVID wards, naka-N95 talaga kami. Um... Ideally, yung mga N95, usually mga 8 hours lang yon, Or kung soiled na siya, you really have to throw it. 
Pero there was a time na nagka-shortage and um, even our hospital reused our N95. So nilalagyan lang namin ng name and then uh, in-sterilize ng hospital at least two times. Parang two times mo pwedeng gamitin. Then we throw. Then they throw it away. How do you how do you sterilize it, Doc? Ah, uh, merong way of sterilizing yung hospital eh. They call it. It's 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 not the UVC. Yung mga ngayon kumakalat rin. UV light. Probably you can use it, but I'm really not sure how. It's called how... a uh, plasma sterilizer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a. Uh, For, especially for surgical instruments. No? You can also use, uh, there's autoclave, of course, but uh, these uh, kinds of uh, material, no? the masks, uh, will not, uh, will not, uh, will not uh, tolerate the uh, autoclave. No? So we use the uh, uh, plasma sterilizer, and they're in the hospital. They cost millions, actually. Nasisira siya kung mga autoclave or yung ano, nasisira siya. Question pa sa doc, like, di ba, face mask, face shield. Some wear that ionizer pendant pa. Some bring this machine na maliit na dehumidifier pa habang nag-meeting. May plasma ayon pa. Parang, what are your thoughts on those? Yung quintas, ano yung, ano ba tawag doon? Yung quintas. Parang air, 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 air card, parang wearable air card, parang ganyan. Yes, okay. yung mga yun. Not recommended and walang, parang wala naman siyang basis or evidence that it can help. Yung mga HEPA filter, yung mga air purifier, it it may help. Doon nga sa lecture ko, the CDC says it can help especially for those who have limited windows or yung yung limited ventilation sa homes. Uh, yung mga air purifier or cleaner okay lang yun. Pero yung mga quintas or kung ano-ano. <laughs> Sorry, one more since we're talking about disinfection because I've always been curious. Kanya-kanya kasi ito, I've never really heard from doctors if ever si- pinapost sa mga YouTube, mga vloggers. Like, how do you disinfect, especially frozen food? Kasi basa na siya. So, parang, aalcohol mo pa ba mga yun? So, like, how do you... Huwag, huwag i-aalcohol. Exactly. Parang, how do you disinfect the wet food? I mean, the mga... Yeah, kasi... Actually, kasi pag niluto mo siya, mamamatay yung virus naman. Yeah, but it... Look, it's wrapped in plastic, so that alone. I mean, if you're OC, so you, can just, you can remove the plastic, place it in another container, then store. Yeah, some would even some would tell me they even washed out the plastic, the whole container. Chaka daw nila papasubin sa freezer. Kung ano ang gagamitin mo, then yun yung iwa wipe mo, then chaka mo i i i ilalagay sa ref. Pero better, tanggalin mo sa plastic, then place it on your own container. Then, But for the mga doc, mga dalata, like fruits and vegetables, how do you disinfect before you store them in your pantry? Actually, pwede mo siyang stand sa labas ng bahay mo kung gusto, kung takot kang ipasok siya for 24 hours, then tsaka mo siya ipas, uh, tsaka mo siya ipasok sa bahay mo. Or you can just wipe it and then that's it. Even But, the fruits, doc? Kasi fruit siya. So how do you? Yung... Alam nga naman, i-disinfect yung fruits. Yun nga, kaya nga, Doc. So parang, I'm, like, wash how do you... The, the usual way, you just wash it with water. Then that's it. Actually, you know, yung contami, yung surfaces, hindi siya ganun ka... Compared to... Wearing a mask. Compared to the respiratory route, yung surfaces is not a highly reliable way of transmitting the disease. It can, but mas less compared to yung magkaharap, yung respiratory mm-hmm. So, mas less yung mga surfaces or yung food or not so much with that. So that's what I read also, Doc. I just want to share. Yung sinabi nga dun sa study ng no article na nabasa ko na people are so concentrated with disinfecting. Nakakalimutan nila that the most important thing is really mm-hmm. to wear a mask. So, it's like a good reminder for everyone. Okay. I think also, Doc, since you talked about mask, what's the proper way of wearing it? Because some don't even use that nose wire. Parang hindi sila maingat. Parang just because they wore it yun na. Or minsan lumalabas konti yung nostrils. So dapat naka-cover yung, yung nose and then partly yung chin. Uh, hindi, not, hindi naman namin nire-recommend na mag-N95 ang general public kasi napaka-hirap niyang... Nat, kung natry nyo na mag-N95, kahit can afford mo siya, ang hirap siyang gamit, hindi ka makahinga. So for the general public, Cloth mask, surgical mask uh, is fine. So, dapat lang cover yung nose tsaka yung chin. Kasi madalas nakikita ko nakalabas ang ilong. Yes. 
Oo, yun nga, Doc. Sorry, one more question because I've written about this a few times. Um, is it important to buy from na FDA approved? Kasi ang rami dyan binabenta na hindi FDA approved. Yeah, meron mga FDA approved masks. Yeah. Tapos so better. Ito, mm-hmm. hindi to FDA approved. Yeah. Mahirap lang minsan i-check which is which. Pero yun, yun kasi mahirap siya pag sa hospital eh. Hospital setting. Dapat talaga yung talagang nakaka-protect. Okay, so we have so many questions talaga sobrang interesting ng ating discussion. And then, we only have time for one last question and that is from uh, Father Belamide. What's the story so far about ivermectin? Uh, for now, yung, the latest guidelines from PISMID, it says there is insufficient evidence for the use of ivermectin, whether for treatment or for prophylaxis against COVID. So we do not recommend ivermectin as prophylaxis or treatment for COVID. But there will be a study that will be uh, done in the Philippines. So we have to wait for that, the result of that study. Okay, wow, what an interesting discussion. Doc Mark. Yeah, very uh, interesting. And perhaps, uh, Valerie, uh, we have taken so much of, of uh, Dr. Amel's time no? and everybody else. Uh, our uh, our uh, webinar is only for four to six. We're three minutes to six o'clock. And uh, we'd, uh, uh, we'd like to call on our um, president yeah, to uh, give his closing remarks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mel. Uh, it's been an interesting afternoon. Uh, I didn't uh, really expect the uh, intense uh, interaction and uh, so many questions. So thank you very much for sharing your valuable time with us. Uh, 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 Kenneth, can we show the uh, uh, certificate of appreciation for Dr. Mel uh, so that we can properly thank uh, Dr. Mel, we'll send you the actual physical copy later. <laughs> so right now, as a uh, virtual copy, Dr. Mel, uh, St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association and St. Jude Catholic School awards this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Imelda Acetre Luna for sharing her ex- expertise to the Judenite com- community, a speaker in the webinar Coping with COVID at Home via Zoom Live and SJCS YouTube channel, given this ninth day of May in the year of our Lord 2021. Signed, Father Roland Aquino, SVD, our school director, and yours truly. So again, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mel. Uh, I would also like to uh, show our certificate appreciations for the uh, the other members of our panels. Uh, and uh, so first of all, uh, the moms, mom, mompreneur, as they call, uh, is that correct? Uh, for for sharing actually very valuable insights and concerns about handling uh, situations in the home. Uh, if you if you you were party to our Viber chat, you will you will see how intense the discussions are, uh, and the need for us to be what they call OC, uh, because really when when I when we listen to Dr. Mel in terms of what the things we need to do. I, I, I really dread uh, <clears throat> having a situation at home, but it is thankful for us to, to really understand it. So we're awarding the certificate to Ms. Jane King Su Cheng for sharing her expertise uh, to the Judenite community as a panelist in this webinar. So thank you very much, Jane. And also to uh, our uh, moderators, uh, Dr. Mark Ko. Thank you very much also. We will send you this uh, physically later on, as well as uh, Valerie. Uh, thank you also for helping us moderate this uh, afternoon session. I think if we didn't have the three of you there, uh, we probably will have uh, outside of Dr. Mel's presentation, a relatively boring event. But with you there, the energy level was very high and I, I really am thankful for your participation. So uh, thank you, uh, Kenneth. So I, I, I would like to thank everybody uh, for joining us and participating in this event. And I hope you found it valuable and helpful. Uh, and if, if you have time, uh, please message us directly uh, as to what other topics you'd like to be covered during Health Talks. 
because I think there's so many things that we need to be able to learn uh, and understand. Uh, as, as Father King said, there's so many things going around, whether true or fake. So discerning what is right or wrong uh, is, is, is probably very helpful to us. And again, we're very thankful that we do have a lot of Judenite alumni in the health profession that can provide us all of these guidance. So thank you very much on behalf of St. Jude Catholic School and the St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association. We gratefully appreciate your support for us and this webinar and the series of webinars that are gonna come out. And I pray again that we will all be protected and kept safe from this pandemic. And, and as many are, are wishing, we are really hoping we go back to the old ways not necessarily the old bad ways, but the, the old normal so that we can go back and hug people, uh, share a bit of meals with our friends and actually uh, embrace people again. Uh, so, so thank you. Have a good rest of your weekend and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you so much to the president of the St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association, Mr. Johnny C. And I just want to get a quick like, final words from our panelists. Jane, any words to the parents, co-parents watching? Sorry, I'm muted. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to the Alumni Association, to our school, St. Jude Catholic School, for um, having this event this afternoon. I feel like it's very timely. Um, a lot of parents are so overwhelmed in what to do what to do so yeah um thank you this initiative is really how we will get through this covid situation that we are in um is really to help each other so yeah looking more forward to more of these projects thank you thank you so much jane king su cheng and dr imelda luna any final words to our attendees um Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. So for everybody, if you are eligible for vaccination, have yourself vaccinated. But continue doing mask, hugas, iwas, hanging dapas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, Dr. Imelda Luna and Jane King Sucheng, thank you so much. Stay safe and stay well. And of course, I want to bring back the floor to Sir Johnny. Sir Johnny? Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, I just want to recognize one other very important member of the organizing committee. So Kenneth, if you can flash the certificate. Uh, you know, many of these things happen behind the scenes, as we call it BTS, not the Korean uh, band, but uh, behind the scenes. But we could not have done this without the able participation of uh, the youngest sister of Dr. Marco, Dr. Rosalind Ko Di Chow. She, she has been really instrumental in, in providing guidance on where we need to go, what topics we need to talk about, uh, and the people that we need to invite in order for us to, uh, to have a fantastic seminar. So Dr. Rosalind, on behalf of the St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association and your alma mater, St. Jude Catholic School, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Roslyn, can, can we show her? Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much, Dr. Roslyn. Right back to you, Val. Sorry. Yes, no worries. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everyone who made this event possible. Doc Mark. Nothing else, Val. Just uh, congratulations to you and uh, more power. Uh, we, um, I, I guess uh, the message uh, Dr. Mel wants to tell us is no uh, uh, Juan, no ivermectin, mas hugas, iwas, and hanging labas. And everybody stay safe, get your, get your vaccines. Okay, so before we wrap up this session, I'd like to request for all our attendees to turn on their cameras. So we can have a photo op. This will be the first of many, many more webinars to come for SJCSAA and SJCS. Smile. Kenneth, are you taking the picture? <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Good. 
Okay, again, thank you everyone for joining us in today's Health Talks, Coping with COVID at Home, presented by SJCS Alumni Association and SJCS. My name is Valerie Tan with... Uh, Dr. Ko, Dr. Mark. <laughs> Yes. Don't call me uncle, buti na lang. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Actually, konting age gap lang. Konting age gap Dr. lang. Okay. lang. Okay na yun. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Wishing everyone a happy weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Happy Mother's thank Day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Johnny, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you, Valerie. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Dr. Dr. Thank Mera. you. Bye. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Kenneth. <laughs> Father <laughs> King, thank you. Thank you, Father King. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ren. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. -bye. Bye.